Hi, this is Glenn Dane. I'm a professor in material science and engineering at Ohio State. What I want to do is introduce a series of lectures and the content that we put together that gives K-12 educators a little background in material science uh, that can be used in classrooms, uh, mostly for professional development. We also have material that will be linked that is, can be directly used for your classrooms. Um, why material science? Well, this starts from a project that's been going on with ASM International and the ASM Materials Education Foundation. It really takes applied chemistry and builds it into products, takes that science, builds it into products through inquiry experiential curricula, and it really integrates the natural STEM disciplines of science, technology, engineering, and math, and puts it together with low-cost demos that you can use in your classroom. It's shown to work very effectively in K-12 classrooms. Uh, ASM Materials Education Foundation has been very successful with this, and I encourage you to uh, look into their camps if you are an, if you are an educator. They're really great things. Um, been very popular with teachers and students alike. Um, the content that's been put together by the ASM Materials Education Foundation looks like this. They go through solids, metals, ceramics and glasses, polymers and composites. We're going to take a little bit different tack, but we're basically going to use all of the example activities that uh, ASM has put together. But what we're going to do is really focus more on the core science behind this, and then we'll link to the activities, hopefully put them into context. And loads of people have done good things in terms of uh, using the activities, and we're going to let that stand as it is. The other thing that this does is this really goes right into science standards and curricula. This is what we do in Ohio. Um, there's physical science that I'll show has loads of connections to material science. Then there's advanced sciences, chemistry, environmental science, some aspects of geology, and lots of physics link directly to material science as well, and we'll go through some of that. So this is what uh, physical science looks like. It's usually taught in the ninth grade in Ohio big parts of this really couple very nicely to material science, particularly energy transformations, putting heat in to melt things, for example. Uh, motion somewhat, not quite as much, but forms of energy we can do a lot with. Uh, we can do a lot, obviously, with classifications of matter. Uh, we can motivate lots of chemistry, chemical reactions, interactions of matter. And this forms about half of the physical science content that happens in most any physical science curriculum. So uh, the other part could be done with, for example, with uh, motion and uh, the universe. But uh, the other ones that are circled uh, all fit very nicely into material science, and that's a, another motivator for using this content. So here's what's in this going to be in this lecture series. This is in development. Um, what we're doing right now represents the overview. Next topic up will be properties of materials, then we'll talk about materials in the past and the future, what they've done for us, what they can do for us, then we'll get into some of the meat, metals, ceramics, polymers, and composites, talk about how they're made, what the structure is, there's some very specific atomic structures, we can change those structures by heating, cooling, doing other things through phase transformations, if we do that right we can change the structure and engineer properties, that's the basis of manufacturing, manufacturing in broad sense, pulls stuff out of the ground, turns it into useful materials, and it might end up back in a, a landfill. That's what I call a material flow. All of that stuff we want to design carefully if we're going to be sustainable. This links to um, the, the ecology part and even the geology part of, uh, of, of what we might like to teach in high school. And then the last part's a little special. Uh, what we want to do is, is acknowledge there's loads of great career paths in science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Not all of them require bachelor's degrees. Loads of great professions and things like welding and other other uh, skilled trades. And then we'll also talk about how this curricula can fit into the standards that we use and develop full courses around it. There's lots of ways of using this. It can be the basis for uh, a hands-on curriculum in studio arts or in things like welding. Um, and, of course, it can lead to, to PhDs and all the rest. So what we're going to do for each of these units back here, we're going to have an overview lecture. There will be some professional development material, PowerPoints, movies, other links of more detailed things you can look for. 
We'll also have moderated discussions on how this might align with standards and be used in a classroom. And this up here really represents professional development. What's down here are things you can use in your classrooms, labs and demonstrations, movies, handouts, and then classroom support material like, like PowerPoints, uh, tests, reading lists, and things like that. So that's really for class usage primarily. So the material we use, uh, we're going to be advocating the use of creative content licenses, which basically means I've taken this from somewhere. This isn't highly original content on my part, and uh, I fully expect people to take it, use it. Hopefully, they'll um, they'll grow on, they'll take it and extend it, and give it back to the community uh, better than it was. And uh, that's a, a great way to to move things along and. Uh, everybody wins, but nobody gets rich necessarily. So acknowledgement, um, again, this is based on a couple of things. Uh, the work of the ASM Materials Education Foundation. We also have a Math Science pa Partnership Grant in the state of Ohio that we are uh, grateful for. We've got a team of people that are working on that. Um, ASM Materials, Materials Education Foundation. Uh, Tom Stoby got this going years ago, did a lot of work, and then in recent years, Andy Nightem and Debbie Goodwin have put countless hours into refining much of this material. Uh, local colleagues at Ohio State University developed a course called 205, now it's called 2010, 2010, um, and that's a course that all aspiring engineers take on materials, and we've used some funding from the Honda Partnership Program to do that. Um, hope you enjoy this series. It'll be coming up uh, a bit at a time. This is just a quick overview, and uh, thanks so much for being with us. We hope you participate and uh, get some useful information out of this. Take care. Hey, this is Glenn Dane, and uh, what I want to do today is tell you about uh, some kits that we have for measuring materials properties. This is all part of our uh, material science for K-12 educators, and I should have updated the title on this. The title really should say materials, materials kits with an exclamation point. This is something that's really simple, but I'm really, really excited about it, um, and we will make more of these if there's a call for them. We'll find a way. Uh, I think it's really a nice thing. So here, here's a couple activities you could do. If, you, if you're in the section on doing materials properties, here are two ways you could use this among many others that you can figure out yourself. So for example, uh, take, take a property you're interested in and just rank materials. Try to understand which, which is higher and understand that there are some units, but you don't need to, there, there are numbers and units, but you don't need to do that. All you've really got to do is, is rank things. And say you've got three materials and rank them. What, which is which is higher in terms of density, strength, stiffness, hardness, electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, reflectivity, coefficient of friction, wear resistance, corrosion resistance. Pick pick whatever you like, and you can really make this very open ended. And if you don't worry about getting numbers, you can make your students be very creative and work through some thought exercises very easily. Um, if you've got more advanced students, the other thing you can do is say, okay, we have this material and we want to put a number on a property. We really care about a number. We're going to use this in design. I'm going to give you units it should be in. Figure out how we, how we measure that and then offer a prize for whoever comes closer. And you can have handbook values that are really, really precise. And you may have students that nail it. You may have some that uh, you know, are in the ballpark. You may have some of their way off, but that's okay. I think this is a really great way you can design experiments, uh, but what you need are you know, some, some reference materials. And what this lecture is about is a set of reference materials that uh, big thanks go to Derek Miller, who's a graduate student here at Ohio State. And, uh, and he, I don't know where that little navigation thing came from, he, he's created these little material science kits that come in a box and inside it there is truly, truly endless fun. So what's in there are wires, and I really, really like wires. And what you see here is we've got copper wire, copper wire, steel wire, and aluminum wire. And you'll notice here that we have things that are basically at the same 
uh, same diameter also. This one's a little bit bigger, but it, it uh, 0.02 at uh, 20 thousandths diameter. We have copper, steel, and aluminum of the same diameter. Imagine what can you do with that. We also have fishing line at about the same diameter. We also have um, a really high test polymer called Dyneema that also uh, we have. It's a braid. It's a little harder to understand exactly how uh, the, the di diameter because it's a braid, whereas these are all monolithic. So again, we've got these things we can compare very nicely. We've also got bundled glass fiber uh, that, that also exists in this. It's also sort of a braid. We've got some cotton twine. So we can understand really these different materials have different properties and we can, we can examine those. So um, for example, we can ask the question very precisely, which material has a higher resistivity, steel, aluminum, or copper? Well, we've got things that have the same diameters associated with them. We can test them either in tension, we can run resistance through them, we can weigh them at the same diameter and the same length, which one has a higher density, and we can rank these things, or we can measure them precisely. So we've got these things all in filaments. I really like filaments, happy to talk much more about them. We also have blocks of these things, and the blocks are all of a size, and uh, so that was very much on purpose so that we can compare the density of these, we can compare the thermal conductivity, um, and we also have wood in there. So again, you can rank order these things, ask what, what, how are they different, or you know, if you want to be tricky, you can, you can start changing sizes and force them to do math on this. We also have beams of these things, and again, we've been careful to choose the same diameters with these. So we can ask ourselves, well, how do these things rank order in stiffness? Do you, do you, do you understand how or why? And you could do the same thing with strength, but if you do things with strength, you start running out of material. And that's also the beauty of wire. All this stuff is, is, is really cheap. We can get more wire. Um, this stuff over here, the blocks and beams aren't, aren't quite as cheap. So here's, here's what it looks like when you open up the kit. Uh, this is your, your glass. Oops. Um, this is your this is your glass. Dyneema marked in the box. These are these are your blocks. Uh, are your beams? So what what can you do with a kit like this? Well, you can do a whole heck of a lot. Um, we can measure physical properties, density, coefficient of friction. Um, the the uh, do they feel warm, which is really a thermal property? We can get into that. We can measure mechanical properties. We can measure electrical properties. And again, as I said at the outset, there's two basic ways you can do this. You can say just rank order them with properties, or you can try to get real numbers on them and come up with some kind of a contest who can get closest with the numbers. So we want to teach measurement. Uh, let's imagine we're going to do resistance. Again, like I talked about in the last lecture, if we take something that has, it has a, and a known diameter, we can use the equations put in the last lecture, figure out what the resistivity, a material property of this is. We can also see that if I take something that is, is longer, it has higher resistance. If I take something that has a greater diameter so associated with resistance, this is absolutely predictable. And how do you measure it? Well, you, we went out and splurged. We've got the very best, uh, very best multimeter that you can get for under about seven dollars at Harbor Freight and uh, here it is it's the uh, the Yugo and uh, basically you just have to set this for uh, resistance measurements and the way you end up seeing this for resistance measurements is down down here this little big ohm symbol down there is, is resistance and you can measure this find the appropriate setting probably down here at uh, 200 ohms maximum. You'll come up with a reading and it's just that simple. It tells you what the resistance is. Well, later on, uh, we can actually measure known voltage, put known voltages through this and measure currents, but this just gives you resistance right out of the box. Real easy. You can measure mass of these. You can also measure volume. And we know that mass over volume. So we can also uh, do that very easily. We can measure dimensions. We can measure force. We can measure temperature analysis. You've got a FLIR camera. Um, a really nice, simple experiment you can do is say, okay, I've got my little uh, two-inch blocks of this. I can put 
hold my thumb on there for a given time, say seven seconds, and then take the FLIR camera, see how fast it takes for my thumbprint to go away. Materials that are highly thermally conductive, your, your thumbprint will go away almost instantly. Things with low thermal conductivity on the FLIR camera, you can see that thumbprint persists for a long time. It allows you to rank order these things very easily. Another thing we put in here, uh, again, we, we didn't spare any expense. This is our uh, mechanical testing adapter. These are two dowel rods with a little hole wrapped into it. And I'll show you in a slide or two how to use that. A lot you can do with this simple little kit. So uh, we want to teach, uh, you know, we can teach measurement, units I've talked about in the last thing, estimation. Um, this, we can see if we've changed properties, we can, uh, uh, and we can relate this to the broad properties of materials. So later in the next uh, lecture or two from now, we're going to talk about the relative properties of metals, ceramics, polymers, and so forth. This allows you to actually measure those properties and see are they higher or are they lower. And then later on, we might be able to change them. Um, density is, is, again, we can you know, basically measure mass, measure, and then materials over value, and you should find that for all aluminum alloys, you get a number of something like 2.7. Um, if you do something like row of polyethylene, you should end up getting something like 1.1. If you do something like steel, I should know this, I think it's something like 7.8. It's my guess, I think. Uh, coefficients of friction, things like that you can do as well. So, so again, real simple stuff, you can get all this. So again, um, electrical, basically just hook up the wire to this. Uh, you can get that. You can also then, for example, put a given voltage on that with a very simple thing like a 9-volt uh, battery. You've got the plus and the minus terminals. You can run the wire through that. Does a high resistance wire or a soft or a low resistance wire heat up faster well you can you can find out don't don't put too low a resistance across it though that's <laughs> all i'm saying you won't hurt yourself too bad you can burn yourself be careful lots of circuit stuff is possible basically because you can make resistors out of this and you can make yourself a resistor if you want a high resistance uh, you can make a, a coil basically get a long length of wire over a short area and you can absolutely calculate the resistance, have your students compete on resistance, for example. Mechanical properties, two things you can do. Again, we have these mechanical test adapters, basically run the wire through the dowel rod. You've got a, a dowel rod with a, with a hole in it. Run the wire up through the hole in the dowel rod, wrap it around a few times, come back here, wrap it off there. It will not, it, and you will almost always get it to fail back down in here. You can take it, pull on it. Um, you could use calibrated amounts of weight to pull on this, give it a given force, find out what thing, when things break. You can do that qualitatively or quantitatively. Uh, so that could measure strength. You can measure stiffness with these beams, for example. Take the beams, use a C-clamp, put them on a table, and see how much a standard mass causes them to deform. You can see this here is my piece of aluminum. Can see how fast, my, how much my standard mass makes that the form of a cup. Put that on my polyethylene, and see it gives it a whole lot more deformation. Well, which one do you think is stiffer? Now, I'll leave that to to you guys and your students to work out, but it's it's all in there. Thermal conductivity uh, is a really good one. You could either, for example, if you've got a FLIR camera, um, you could you could hold one end of this at a given temperature and look at the temperature distribution off of this. You can put, again, fingerprints on these different materials, see how long it persists with the FLIR camera, or you can put ice cubes on top of each of these and see how long they, they last. And again, you can try to get real numbers or just rank things, nice things you can do there. Um, so we haven't done this. This isn't a reminder at this point. We're going to get into this later. But different materials properties generally behave differently. Metals generally are conductive with respect to temperature and electricity. They're ductile. They're strong and they're relatively stiff. Glasses are poor conductors. They can be strong and stiff, but they're brittle. Be careful if you try to break them, protect things, uh, don't get cut. And then polymers are generally poor conductors. They can be strong, but they're usually not very stiff at all. And uh, so we can tie that all back.